Favourite Queens of the Stone Age track of all time. Turn that off. I know. <laughs> When you left us last time, what we'd done is we'd kind of shaped this piece of oak, uh, we'd sanded it all back, we'd flamed it, uh, we've gone to 240 grit prior to lacquering. This is four coats of lacquer on here now, um, which has given it, it's a low sheen lacquer, so it's not going to kind of glare at you like it's, um, oh, like it's like a yacht, high yacht varnish. It, it's not going to do that. It's a little bit matte, but we still, we feel we've got a really nice kind of finish. So we've had to jump ahead. We're sorry we kind of didn't, but you know, stick with us. You're going to see us doing this finish again. I mean, this is one of my favourite finishes. So, you know, we're going to jump into that. We'll tell you what products we use. Um, in fact, we'll probably flash those up now. Yeah. Around the edge of the screen there. Great. Yeah. Also, what we've done is we've let, we've numbered and let in all our trace hooks and heraldic shield detail, I want to call it. Um, also, what we've done on the back, let in our tea slots, which we've made. Out of scrap, I'll have you know. In fact, most of this was made out of scrap, which is really nice because it's that recycled element. This would probably just still be rotting in the hedge I found it in. First job first, actually a little bit of joinery, which will be quite good. And what we're going to do is we are going to fit our tea slots. Okay, that's better. Yeah, that, that just wasn't cutting it, was it, that one? No. So essentially, there we go. That's the idea. So, you know, you pop it on and drop it down. You can pull these as tight into the wall as you like. Um, you can even put a little a little rubber wedge under a corner to hold the whole thing like. Um, this just stops you having to through fix. Uh, also, these little guys, which I've only just started using. What are those? Well, it, uh, I didn't even know they were available, but for stuff like this, they're brilliant. Uh, it is a huge roll plug, drill size 10 mil. So, great roll plug, like a 10 mil for a bolt fixing. I didn't even know they were available. They're brilliant, use them. But only when you're using bolts, they're too big for other stuff. Do you think you could give us a link for that at Watson? I can get you a link for that. Powerful. And here's a link. Oh, genius. Do it the other way. And here's a link. Amazing. Cool. Okay, so what we've got here, some forks and bits. Let's get a picky, picky, picky. People like the picky pick picks. So I think we'll use that one, that, that should do it. So hopefully this will, what we're going to do is we're just going to cut out for our... Yeah, do you want to get in there? Uh, hold on. So what we're going to do basically is just cut out our channel for our bolt head. Do it, do okay. it. Okay. Doing stuff with wood. Al oh, Watson, Al oh, Watson, let's hope it turns out good. It's my new jingle. I think there might be some copyright issues. Really, why? Willy Wonka. Oh, is that, Wonka. Wonka. <laughs> is that where I got it from? I don't even know about stuff. What a pig this thing is to. It's so heavy. So, do you need to do this, or are you just showing off how to use the kit? Uh, no, because what I, we do want a we want a channel. Now, so essentially, what I'm doing is you, you would never be able to freehand drill take that section out, but we want a channel in there. So the idea is with that in the press, and then we'll tidy that up with some chisels. Some good stuff. A chisel? Yeah, chisel. I like to put my thinking cap on when I'm doing chiseling. <laughs> so, left and right. 
I have marked everything up. Fitted. Cool. Oh, for fuck's sake. Oh. <laughs> right, uh, I think this would look really good. Yep. I think this would look really good with some brass screws in it. Should we go and get some? Am I following you? Yeah, it's a bit dark though. I can make that work. Oh. I have to disappear right down here. The blinking's adding a whole new effect. Yeah. Oh. The lightning of creation. Selection of screws, brass screws. Not those. Not those. But they're on the back, Al. No one's going to see them. Yeah, it's not the point, though. I think brass would just look better. Oh, yeah, you'll see what I mean. So, Al, what did you think of uh, how Potwood played out? Well, I mean, uh, the weight of responsibility now we've kind of tripled our subscription is really quite weighing heavily upon some of my shoulders, I think. Yeah? Uh, yeah, you know, it feels like we're... Uh, oh, just, ah, just squeeze past there. Um, it feels well, yeah, we've got a real responsibility now to produce, to be, okay, ask me again, I'll turn into it, I'll just <laughs> pretend I'm not. So Al, how do you feel about how Popwood played out? What, Popwood playback? You know, yeah, what it's good, like? it's a little bit of a vindication because we do put a lot of work into this and, you know, it might not look like it. You know, we, we put a lot of work into it and we enjoy doing it, but, you know, it's nice to know that actually what we're doing you know, people kind of are enjoying, I suppose. So yeah, you know, yeah, it's good. You're gonna wave at all the new yeah, subscribers. Hiya, hiya new subs. <laughs> we love each and every one of you. Not you. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Mark, keep up. Sorry. So essentially, what, if you just have a little look, that just sits beautifully in there. Okay. Look nice, don't they? We could antique those. I'm going to take the thinking cap off though because my head's getting sweaty. Put that back there on its hanging place. Now I was told by my dad that when you fit brass screws you should always have the slot lined up. So I think we're going to do that east to west and I believe, and people can correct me in the comments, but I've always known this as a yachty finish. And what's that where the screws are uh... all lined up like that? Ah, uh, okay. The other thing we should do really here is we should be putting a little bit of tallow on these screw threads. We've got beeswax here. She'll do the same thing. I... What we should be doing, because we're going into oak with a brass screw, is we should lubricate the threads Lube. There's always a dropsy. There's always a dropsy. Just pop him in. We've already piloted these. Make sure you use a screwdriver that actually fits the head. Oh, look at that, the way that went in there. Oh, wow, that made a difference. So. <laughs> what were you just doing? Quality wiping. <laughs> T slots are in. What we need to do now is we need to affix our shield. So we've already let those in. Uh, they're quite tight because there's like four levels of lacquer, four layers of lacquer. Um, now I think what we're going to do with these is gently pull that one out. I was going to stick these in with epoxy, and then we'll do all the um, then we'll do all the uh, riveting. Yep. So epoxy, now um, don't get me wrong, I believe epoxy is just Araldite as we know it as a, um, a product in this country. Araldite's like, for this amount of Araldite, it's like £8. I got all of that for 99p or £1.99 on Amazon and I'm like epoxy's epoxy. So why are you going to spend eight quid on two of them because of a brand? Um, we'll stick a link below. Crikey, you are linking up today, aren't well, you? Well, I know, but I'm just like, it kind of irritates mm. me because I'm like, epoxy's epoxy. It's, it's, it, you know, there's not, 
You can't make epoxy better than epoxy. It is epoxy. So equal parts uh, hardener. The smell of this is the smell of my childhood. My dad was a, he used to make models and he used to go into his study and it was the smell of pipe smoke and the smell of epoxy resin. And it is quite a, it's quite, once you know it, it's quite a, you know, you'll be smelling it now, I dare say. And uh, let's get those mixed in together. The more you mix them, the better it is. Funnily enough, the more you mix it, the longer the open time. So the longer the time before it sets. It's got a real distinct smell, hasn't it? It's not mm. unpleasant as such. Looks like Ghostbusters slime. Yeah. So what we'll do is we will just pop that in there. I mean, these are getting riveted as well. So this is belt and braces stuff. So we just get that mixed in. I'm trying to keep it away from the edges as such. So I've numbered all of these on the back because obviously these being handmade, they're all slightly different. So they're numbered one through five, this being number three. Why have we started with number three? It's the first one I picked up. Can't really tell you anything other than that. There we go, in. So we've shown people you cutting out things before, haven't we? We've shown, um, in fact, I think we've kind of covered the process of making one of these in an earlier film. Link below. No, it'll be up there. Link up here. No, to that. Up. Link this way. That Yeah, there it is. Okay, I think we've shown you making these before. <laughs> Link up here. <laughs> um, so what we are going to do today is we're going to show you the process of making a trace hook, but we're probably going to leave out the process of making a shield and the staple to hold the trace hook. You can put all that together, and it also means that you've got to watch all our bloody videos to work out how to make one of these. Not just one quick video and bang, you're out there making these and you're undercutting me in a very competitive market. No, thank you. <laughs> uh, okay, so we will, shall we just kind of power, power through fixing those then? Just do it and I'll okay. record it. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. We're, yeah. we're in there, yeah. It's only just gone nine o'clock and look at all the things we've seen and done. <laughs> Chunky bit of furniture that. It is, it's, I, yeah, it is. It's, uh, it certainly is. But then, you know, it's, it's like we said, I just didn't like the walnut and I'm so sorry and I know, you know, walnut's an expensive timber, but somehow it, to me, it suits this. I think what it is, is the walnut looks too clean. It's maybe even too fine a grain. So when it polishes it up, it looks too, too good. It's, it, it may, you know, hopefully, and like, you know, when this is our chance to age a touch, you know, it's going to actually look like what it's meant to look like, like it was made maybe 200 years ago, 300 years ago, whereas the walnut, it wouldn't have done. I think even the choice of black walnut wasn't the right choice, but I wanted to work with it. I wanted to try it. And that came back to slap me in the face. And now everyone on YouTube hates me. Uh, okay, so let's talk about these. What are so, they? Well, this is what we've kind of explained before. We love that look of copper and steel. So what we're going to do with these little bad boys is we're going to take these little copper rivets and what we do first is we take the head and peen over and just put some detail, some texture on there.
timing on that was superb. Was it? I'm just going to do this with something to protect the head of the copper rivet. Would this be where you needed a soft mallet? A soft face mallet? Is this where you need one? God, yeah, God. Well done, Mark. Really well done. Yes, it is exactly where you'd need a soft face mallet. Shut up. No. Don't you be telling people to shut up. What? So what we've got is a punch. If we're going to use a punch, we want a hammer that can provide quite a nice little blow. Uh, yes, we'll just go over here. So essentially, do you want to tell you what I'll do? I'm focused. You are? Yeah. On um, this top rivet here. Okay. Clamp that down. Oh, just takes the spring out of everything. This is going to spring as well. Yeah. Yeah. Don't show that. The way you almost took your own hand off. Yeah. You like that? <laughs> yeah, very much so, sir. Very much so. Are you happy with your work? Yes, uh, very much so. When we made our initial walnut coat hill, we had sat here one of our now hopefully infamous skulls. But what we feel is it's maybe just a bit too niche. Um, so we're going to try with this piece of furniture. Bear in mind that this will be, you know, we'll probably be making, I mean, Mark came up with the idea of having skulls like this kind of set into the timber um, with the hooks somewhere, you know, maybe coming out of the jaw or, you know, looped between the eyes. So that'll be something we'll return to. Or we might make a little one-off of that and kind of publish that on YouTube. Um, but what we decided is we were going to go for something a little bit more mass appeal. So we're going to go with something that's just a little bit more heraldic. So um, I think the only thing to do is to get on with it. Yeah. Yeah. So Because got... um, the idea is, is that this is a big one, isn't it? Well, this is five foot long and it's, you know, it's five foot it's long. It's a monster. It is quite, you know, it's nearly as tall as a child. Yeah. Mark. But w you could make... A three. A three. I think we've got to stick with odd numbers. I mean, the next one up from this would be a seven. Yeah. Uh, the next one down from this would be a three, and then probably a one. Would you do a one? I think we would, yeah. I think we'll do a test one when we do the skull idea. It's a good so idea. We'll do, yeah, well, it was, Mark, and it was your idea, so it'll be interesting. Maybe you could make take... Maybe you could take more of an active oh, part. Maybe idea. I could film you making that. That's um, what I was going to say. Let's not do that. Okay. What's next? Well, what we're going to do is we are just going to, what I did on the back of this one, um, and this is actually, you know, here we go. Look at our shame. When I made that walnut thing, you know, maybe this is where it all started. It actually, I was photographing it for Instagram. You may have seen the photos on there. And it fell off in the wind, the wind blew, and this fell off and this basically ditched and it's bent and buggered. You know, maybe that's where I started hating that walnut thing. So what we've got to do is on the back of this, we've just got to work out between Mark and I now, we might set the camera up and we're just going to do a little work out what height we're going to put that shield. So. <laughs> so. <laughs> that's staying in. That's staying in. Um, Take two. Okay, so we just need to work out what, I mean, I kind of feel that we're here. Doesn't matter because if you're going back in the forge, so let's just put a line on it. I think there, do you think that's where it wants to sit? Just let me prop it up at the back, a bit bigger. What do you think? Yeah? What are you doing? Well, do we need a bit more clear space? Are you going to let it in? No, we're not letting it in. It's going to sit like that, but it's going to be kind of attached at the back. We might even have it set forward. Does it need it? 
Mm. Is what I'm thinking. Well, I'm not entirely happy with this. We've okay. just had a board meeting, haven't we? Yeah, well, you know, uh, what we just thought is, I don't know. <coughs> I'm not entirely sure there's enough clean space between the heraldic shield and this to really warrant kind of attaching this and both of us agree so this is probably going to be the first of many I mean I've already made about four or five of these already so essentially you know the fact is at a later stage someone may come along and say well can you do me one and can you include that shield and the fact of the matter is we can um, however for this one you know we don't feel the skulls right you know if you see that the, the clear space is better with the skull there I mean do we put the skull on it the skull is better I think. But it's clear space, isn't it? I mean, but that's where, you know, this could sit here, you see. It could sit like that. That's the idea, that it's going to sit forward of that line. Does that look better with a bit of space? Do you know what I mean? I'd leave it without to stay. Okay, in. I think what we're I gonna... think it's clean. Yeah, I okay. think it... Maybe it's not too adorned. It's quite a heavy piece of furniture anyway, so, you know, maybe, maybe that's it. But, I suppose you know... that's what the comment section is for oh yeah the comment section oh yeah down there down there maybe yeah, this yeah, time. Yeah. the thing about making things yourself is that you can you know you you sometimes don't see the entire project until you you know until it's done until you can offer things up and that's the joy of you know kind of making you know things yourself you can offer things up and does it work doesn't it work i mean i'm I'm like 50-50 and I just think, you know, at a later stage it would take nothing to add that on there. So, you know, we can do that. You know, this one the same, you know. We, we You know, maybe the comments will say we need to add it on, at which point, you know, you're probably going to see a video in the future of us sticking that on the top, which isn't going to be very exciting, but it'll give you an idea of what this will look like. Or pop over to our Instagram, because this will be kind of photographed and popped on there. Um, okay, anyway, so yeah. There we go. Thanks for joining us. Um, we thank everyone for kind of like, you know, the new subscriptions and, uh, you know, you've really put the kind of cosh on us now to kind of try and cre uh, create some really interesting little projects. So stick with us. Uh, the next video after this, we've got a really interesting little kind of flintlock pistol from about 1820. We're kind of in collaboration with an engraver that we're going to be talking to. That should be really kind of interesting. Uh, so yeah, stick with us. Thanks for thanks for you know thanks for all your subscriptions. Uh, please comment. You know, really enjoyed this one and hope you do too. Save it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but you could always use it.